Welcome to a review of the Microscope ID Club. Um, the Microscope ID Club was born as a result of discussions with the Leicestershire Entomological Society and the Leicestershire and Rutland Wildlife Trust. We knew that people were interested in learning how to use microscopes, but buying a microscope was seen as a big step if you were just starting out. We decided to trial the Microscope ID Club once a month for six months at the Volunteer Training Centre uh, based at Rutland Water to encourage the use of microscopes for the identification of microfauna and flora. We particularly wanted to emphasise the identification aspect rather than the photographic aspect, hence the use of ID in the uh, club name. The uh, Leicestershire and Rutland Wildlife Trust kindly gave the use of the facilities for free and helped with consumable items. I loaned two of my microscopes and the Wildlife Trust loaned their teaching microscope, which we could connect to the digital projector. By the way, the image in this slide is the uh, face of a tortrix moth. You can see the large compound eye in the center of the screen and at the one o'clock position you can see a small simple eye that confirms the, uh, the family as being a tortrix moth. And overall yes it worked. We tried a variety of formats but a few hours planned activity with plenty of time for people to follow their own interests seemed to work best. Before COVID-19 hit, we were deciding how to make the club work in the long time, long term, sorry, and had extended the meetings from morning to all day. In this particular photograph, we're looking at using mosquito keys. It took us a while, but yes, we did get an ID on this, uh, this mosquito, Culex pipiens. And yes, it does bite people. The selection of moths proved a popular topic. The slow cooker towards the right hand side of the photo is to warm caustic sodium hydroxide solution prior to dissection. And yes, we did have to implement very strict health and safety guidelines, but thankfully we had no accidents and playing around with the chemicals proved very popular. In fact, by popular request, the uh, wet kit, as we called it, for the dissection was set up at every meeting with members bringing their own specimens or choosing from my storage box of specimens or working through material forwarded by the county recorder. Some of the results have actually made it onto the Moth Dissection UK website as in this uh, slide here. Overall we identified 137 moths by dissection but best of all, we were developing the skill base in the county. We were, in pl were planning to include sessions on preservation and pre presentation of specimens, as these are skills that are getting lost, but we had to pause our physical meetings for the reasons that we all know about. Field work was very popular with the longer format meetings. Uh, one in particular, we searched for tardigrades and found them in nearly every sample of moss and lichen that we took. Personally, I think uh, tardigrades are only second to puffins in their popularity. Mind you, we failed to identify them as you have to start by counting their toenails. Does anybody know how to keep a tardigrade still? We never worked out how to do it. We were also planning on doing sessions on uh, collecting and identifying spiders and beetles. But again, uh, we had to stop uh, the, uh, these field meetings, um, again, for the reasons that we all know about. But so maybe now things are easing a bit, perhaps we can start thinking about doing this in some way. But anyway, what can we actually do with microscopes at the moment? Well, for my part, I'm using the microscope nearly every day for trickier moth IDs, even macro moths. Many features are hard to see with the naked eye, 
but they're really clearly visible on a light and lightly anesthetized moth is one can get the light at just the right angle to see faint markings. Here, uh, I'm looking at a uh, common marble carpet and I've highlighted the, uh, the cross line that really helps with the ID. The stigmata in the common marble carpet is also um, a long comma shape as well. Uh, and amongst all the uh, marble carpets, there are just a few dark marble carpets. It's a very small percentage. But uh, as you can see, the cross lines and the stigmata are actually quite, uh, quite different in shape, if you can get the light right. It looks like we're going to have to continue on um, uh, online for some time. So before I end my short review of uh, um, uh, activities. It, it seems prudent to plan for the long time, use long term using online meetings. But the question is what format should they take? These are a few suggestions of mine. Uh, a virtual garden bio blitz. We could take quite a lot of photos and post them you know, to a group. Informal chats. We did an awful lot of informal chatting at the uh, the VTC meetings. Um, while we were letting things cook in the chemicals. And I think the talking was a very important aspect because we all got so many ideas from each other. I think we could probably do online presentations on microscope techniques, but to do that, you need access to a microscope that can record a video. Um, and not all of us have that. I, I've got one here and we've got the one at, at the BTC, but not everybody can record um, a meeting, uh, a video like that. I suppose we could also do some how-to videos that might be useful. And maybe something else we could do is collaborate on writing ID keys because well, <laughs> we've all got a lot of time on our hands. Anyway, that brings to an end my short review of the Microscope ID Club. I hope you found it interesting and I'm going to look forward to getting some feedback and any ideas from you as to how we can actually move on from here. Welcome to okay. a review of the Microscope ID Club. Um, the Microscope ID Club is uh, He's gone away now, that's good. Yeah, yeah so good you're going to play it twice. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, I wanted to just sort of have that review, but uh, I do think perhaps that it might be better to move on to your presentation. And by the way, I did get quite a bit of distortion on the uh, sound there, so there's clearly something um, going on um, with my internet i suspect it's something to do with the large amount of building work that's going on uh, just outside my house um it, the, the two things do seem to go together um anyway uh, but i think it might be nice if we have your presentation and then a a, a chat about the ideas um, that i made and any other great ideas people might have for um, formats for a meeting that will work online um, okay, uh, thanks, Paul. Um, in that case, yeah, I'll I'll just um, I, there was something I was going to talk about this afternoon, um, and uh, as Paul says, it might help uh, inform discussion and uh, uh, ideas of what people would like to see in uh, these sessions uh, in future. So if I just run through uh, mine uh, briefly. Um, uh, the question I get asked a lot, I share a lot of uh, photographs on social media and the um, question I get asked a lot is what sort of microscope do you have? And it kind of pisses me off really because if you win the Great British Bake Off you don't generally get asked what sort of oven do you have, right? So um, it's not, uh, you know, having a, an expensive microscope is, is a good thing but it's not the end of the world. Um, it's also the person using it and how the microscope is set up, that, that's pretty important. And dare I say it, undervalued. But for the record, since people ask me, 
Um, this is my stereo microscope, and I probably spend 90% of my time uh, when I'm doing microscopy using the stereo microscope. Um, uh, it, it, this is the technical um, uh, um, description of it. Um, it's a, a zoom microscope, which is very useful. Um, I would call this a mid-range um, stereo mic. Um, it's not the cheapest you can buy, but you can certainly spend a lot more money than this if you want to buy a, a Leica or a Nikon or something like that. Um, it's a stereo microscope um, which, with two eyepieces, and that sounds a bit blindingly obvious, but the significance of that is it gives you depth of vision. You perceive objects to have depth. And if you're doing something like a dissection, uh, that's extremely helpful and, 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 and very important. Uh, the microscope also has two built-in light sources. It's got a, an above the stage uh, LED and it's got a transilluminating uh, light source as well. And uh, I mentioned those for a specific reason. But I also have uh, a compound microscope and um, I find that I wind up switching backwards and forwards between the two microscopes. Now, um, uh, this, this is called an Apex Practitioner. I don't know much about the company that makes this one. I bought it from Amazon. They have a shop on Amazon you can buy things from. They're Chinese. Um, in the last few years, there has been a flood of Chinese optics onto the market. Um, and they are, um, initially, they were quite variable in quality. Some of it was complete rubbish, um, but some of it, for the price you pay, uh, is absolutely superb quality. You might have to pay 10 times the price to get a European-made microscope of equivalent quality. But it is buyer beware uh, because um, there, is, there is a bit of, um, uh, um, you know, there, there is quite a lot of variation. Now, typically, uh, a, a compound microscope just has substage uh, illumination. Um, and so if you want to illuminate a, a, a larger, so if you've got something like um, cells on a slide, you can transilluminate them. But if, you, if you've got a larger object, you need to illuminate it from the top. So what I tend to use and what an awful people, a lot of people use, we saw these in uh, Paul's video, are these IKEA uh, Jansjo um, uh, lamps. Uh, they're relatively cheap, they're quite easy to use, they're flexible, they're LED, um, and they're very, very widely used in microscopy. And this is a setup um, uh, I um, uh, have for macro photography, but you can do the same thing. You can just shine the um, uh, micro, you can just shine the uh, lamps onto the stage of the microscope and adjust them by looking down the eyepiece till you get the illumination you want. Um, one thing I'm not gonna talk about today, but I might wanna talk about at some point in the future, um, is um, uh, diffusing um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the microscope. Um, uh, Steve says Janjos have been discontinued. Um, there are still some around. Uh, there, I think the clip-on ones are still going. Uh, you can certainly get them on eBay. Um, but anyway, um, uh, the, if, if you use an undiffused light source, you, you tend to get quite a nasty result in some ways. Um, and so um, uh, it, uh, that's a topic for another day because diffusing light is, is another whole issue. I, won't, I don't want to get into that today. Um, the other light source I use on the stereo microscope, I think it would be difficult to get this to work on the compound, is one of these uh, multi-LED uh, ring lights. Um, and this works well in all circumstances except one, and that is if your subject is something which is shiny and reflective, like a beetle or a ball bearing, um, and then it doesn't work very well. But then, then, then we get into issues with the, the uh, um, uh, diffusion again. So this just attaches um, uh, to the bottom of the stereo microscope, just using the, the screws, um, and uh, you can take it on and off. You can pay a lot of money for one of these. Um, you can pay hundreds of pounds 
um, but don't would be my suggestion. Uh, these are available on eBay for 25 quid, which is what I paid for mine, and it works perfectly well uh, for um, what it is. So by using a combination of, of these light sources, I've, I've, I've taken the photos that um, I, uh, I, I, I've been sharing on social media for the last year or so, but I gradually got more dissatisfied with this. And so um, a couple of months ago now, I bought myself one of these, and this is a unit from Brunel Microscopes. There are, again, there's a whole range of other things out there, other manufacturers. Uh, this is quite a cheap one, and I'd venture to suggest it's very good value for money. Um, it, it's like a much more sophisticated version of the Jansio. And the difference between this and the Jansio is that whereas the Jansio is effectively a floodlight, where it's got a very wide angle, this is a spotlight and it gives you a very directional light. And the nice thing about that is you get much better definition in your subject with that uh, directed light. So this is an example of the sort of image that uh, I'm able to uh, produce um, using this. Um, and um, uh, this is um, uh, an orbweb spider, Ariana, uh, Arianella rather. Um, and um, I'm, I'm happy with this. The, the resolution that I can get has jumped up by replacing the Jansios with the uh, Brunel unit. And likewise, uh, hang on, likewise, wait a minute, here we go. Um, these are spider bits. I seem to spend my days looking at spider bits. So these are on the left, the pulps of a uh, clubionid spider and uh, a linifeid uh, epigyne um, on the right. And you can see I'm, uh, I, it, I've got a sort of step change in order of uh, magnitude um, uh, by uh, changing the light source from the Jantos to the Brunel unit. Now the Brunel unit costs about 150 quid uh, plus postage. Um, which uh, you might think is a lot of money uh, compared to the Jans Joes. Uh, you get what, in, in this case, you get what you pay for. But my suggestion is if anyone is out there is thinking about changing their microscope, um, before you spend thousands of pounds on your microscope, I would think very hard about spending 150 quid on a light source first, or even 25 quid on one of the LED uh, ring lights because you can get a lot of bang for your buck. And I've been uh, delighted with the resolution of the images that I'm getting. So this is another spider pulp. This is a Pirata pulp. And I'm, I'm very happy with the images. They're so much better than I could get using the Jans Joes, uh, using this more focused light beam. Now, uh, these uh, photos are all taken using a combination. I've got a couple of Sony cameras I use on my microscope. I've got a, a Sony A6000, which is a relatively cheap camera, and an A7R2, which is, which is a bit more expensive. But um, the other, the, what I wanted to finish off by saying is you don't need an expensive camera. So um, this is taken using just a little um, compact camera, this is uh, an old Panasonic uh, Lumix I bought secondhand for 90 quid. And this is a Clubiona um, epigyne. So this is a relatively large spider, um, but this is the epigyne and you can make out this shape. You can make out the sort of beak on the back of this epigyne, giving you uh, um, a very unmistakable identity for the spider. Um, and this is a picture of Philodromus dispar. This is a live specimen. I took down the microscope just using the compact camera. And this is the epigyne of Philodromus dispar. So using the compact camera, uh, you're beginning to stretch a bit to resolve the epigyne, but certainly there's enough information in here to see it uh, clearly. You don't actually need it uh, for this species, uh, but nevertheless, um, what I'm saying is, before you spend 10,000 pounds on a microscope, think about the other components that go into making up the image. And lighting, I think, is something we could all pay a lot more attention to. So um, over to you guys, discuss, basically.
can I yeah. start? Thanks for going quiet. Yeah. <laughs> can I just start by saying thank you for letting me join in on this? I'm very new to all of this um, on my own, if you see what I mean. I've used laboratory equipment in the past. It's all just been there ready for me to use. And I've never really had to put too much time into thinking about what make it work. That I'm using at the moment. I have that same Apex practitioner that you have, um, but my stereoscope is, I mean, I may as well have got it out of a Kinder Egg. It's so cheap and it's so basic, <laughs> but it has helped me figure out what it is that I need to learn more about and what it is I need to start looking at, you know, uh, perhaps investing a bit more money in. Um, I don't have a whole lot of money to play with, unfortunately. So all of these super high-end microscopes are way out of my reach at the moment. So what I'm hoping to learn from uh, just listening to you guys and, you know, sort of seeing what it is you do with the equipment that you have um, is learning. So I want to learn exactly what I should be looking for in like an entry level stereoscope um, and try and figure out what I should be prioritizing for the sort of thing that I'll be using it for, which as you know, Alan is pretty much going to be a hundred percent spiders. Yeah. So yeah. That's what, what, I would what, 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 what I would suggest is um, uh, you talk to one of the companies. So um, Paul, uh, I mean, Brunel microscopes, GX um, and the, the, the place I like is a place called one stop nature. Uh, which is out in uh, Norfolk. Um, I can't remember the guy's name that runs One Stop Nature, but he he is excellent. Um, and all of the, it, uh, I, you need to phone them up and talk to them. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to them about what your budget is, and they will all have at various times used and reconditioned instruments. Um, I I'm I'm I never buy anything new. Um, I buy uh, the microscope. I've got another stereo microscope. Uh, there was an offer. Um, on the uh, on the website um, for a used instrument, so um, I you know I prefer so I'll have that one, and um, then through various uh, things that happened, I couldn't have that one. Uh, so he actually gave me a new one for the price that he'd advertised the used one for. All of my camera equipment, I don't buy new cameras, I buy used cameras. Um, and you know you you you're cutting the price uh, of high quality equipment greatly. I think used lighting equipment is quite hard to get hold of and and the point of what that I was trying to make in the talk is before you spend a lot of money on a microscope, maximize your lighting because lighting will give you more bang for your buck. Don't get me wrong, I mean good quality optics are um are are important. But you, you, you. If 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 money is an issue, and it is for most people, um, then um, you know, think about the lighting before you go any further. So there's some comments in the chat window. I'll pick up. Steve Scott shares in IKEA apparently because he seems to know what IKEA is doing all the time. Uh, Steve, you want to say something about Jans Joe's? You're muted, Steve. You're muted, Steve. Sorry about that, the space bar didn't work. Um, I've been using Jans Joe's now for about 10 years uh, and on my stereo microscope, but I also use them on the compound for top lighting for doing springtails. But with the, uh, with the stereo microscope, it's a Meiji, uh, an EMZ5. And I find that they have quite a yellow color cast to them. So, I, like yourself, Alan, I have to use diffusion with them as well. But in all honesty, uh, I, under the microscope, I am not getting images of anywhere near the quality of your own. And it's been puzzling me for a while. So I'm very pleased that I'm able to actually talk to you face to face. And I, I hope to follow this up later. Um, I must admit, some of the images that you've posted which have seemed to come from the microscope, particularly on Facebook. I have wondered whether you've been using um, uh, DSLR and stacking equipment with maybe uh, a tube lens and a microscope objective on the end. 
so um, uh, a couple of things to say. Um, uh, the, the first thing to say is that pretty much all the images I do are stacked. Um, the, um, the, 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 the two images, I, or the, the ones I showed at the end, uh, like the Philodromus and the Clubiona with the compact camera, uh, they're not stacked because um, I was literally just holding the camera against the eyepiece and getting a good stack is um, a, a real problem. Uh, with that if you've not got your camera mounted stably to the microscope. So for anyone who's not familiar with this, image st focus stacking is a technique. Um, uh, the, the problem with uh, microscope optics is that the higher the magnification you go, the, the smaller the depth of field. And we're taking photographs of three-dimensional objects. They might be very small three-dimensional objects, but they're three-dimensional. And once you get up to uh, anything much above 10 times magnification, the depth of field is vanishingly small. So what we do is we take a whole series of images racking up through the plane of focus, and then we use software to put all those images together. So all my images are stacked, well nearly all my images are stacked using Zareen um, to produce those images. So um, maybe, maybe that's another one to put on the list. Maybe we could talk about focus stacking. Um, Paul, do you use Helicon? Yeah I, yeah, I was going to chip in there. Yes, I've been experimenting with focus stacking for quite a long time. And uh, um, I have to say, um, I, I have been working really hard at getting the same sort of quality of image that um, you've been achieving there. Um, just before we, we came online, um, I'm now starting to experiment with um, pre, um, pre um, ed editing, pre, pre developing the stack before I stack. Um, the, the sort of things that I've already posted up to the Moth Deception website, it probably takes from start to finish about three hours to get a finished photo. And in the end, I'm down to pixel level editing. So I use um, uh, what I was using up until really recently was um, uh, a Nikon with an adapter on the um, microscope that uh, a slightly the microscope I was using then was a slightly more modern one of the ones that you have. I then um, was stacking the stack with Helicon Focus then I was post developing that stack through um, Lightroom and the various Lightroom apps and then finally yeah, the final stage was actually getting um, the, the subject out onto uh, doing a cutout basically and if I needed to move bits around like get the adiagus in line with the valva I'd move that at that stage and then label it up but that um, but I found it really good fun but that was about three hours I've just bought myself a new um, uh, setup which I'm having some teething troubles with um, but I've now got a, a 20 megapixel dedicated C3 camera and I'm really looking forward to um, getting that and seeing what sort of quality I can, I can get out of that because I'm anticipating uh, quite high quality. And by the way, you're asking who it was at the One Stop Nature Shop and that's Richard Campy and he that's and great. his, um, hello there, they're such nice people really really worth having a chat to them um, because they will really make sure you buy the right product I, I would I would second that I would I would phone around I would phone GX I would phone Richard Campy at One Stop Nature and 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 see what they've got they've all got deals they've all got reconditioned instruments uh, mm. that, that you know will save you a ton of money um, it, yeah, it's I, ETS I think... not GX by the way the GX's are made by GT Vision yeah. So G, the, the GTX is the name of their slightly older range of microscopes. I think they may have been superseded now. But anyway, it's okay. GT Vision for the GX range of microscopes. Um, we can maybe share some links later. Um, so um, that, uh, I, I think 
maybe today is not the day to do a deep dive into image stacking, focus stacking. Maybe we could have a bit of a tutorial, a session on that for a future event. Um, Margaret was asking about that. Um, there's two pieces of software. There's one piece called Zarene Stacker, and there's another called Helicon Focus. But that might be a good target for uh, a, a good topic for a future meeting. Um, I'll just go back to a, a question that Steve had. Um, he asked about um, cameras versus um, um, uh, um, uh, microscopes. Um, so the, 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 um, if you get above one times magnification, uh, so macro photography, uh, the bog standard lens is the Canon MPE uh, 65 millimeter lens that's been discontinued for years and so they're becoming more and more expensive i think typically you'll pay something like 800 quid for an mpe uh these days um i um, had one for a long time was never entirely happy with it maybe i didn't have a good copy the optics do vary a lot there are bad copies of things out there that have been maybe dropped or maybe don't quite or maybe even the manufacturer wasn't perfect at the beginning um, I uh, now use uh, this. This is, I never know how to pronounce this. Uh, they, they call themselves various names, Chinese. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's Venus Optics is the one I, or, or Lauer, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how you say it. Um, this is a three to five times uh, uh, macro or ultra macro lens, 300 quid new. Um, they, it, they're hard to find used because they're, everyone's trying to snap them up, the relatively cheap new. Uh, by using a combination of this and um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, what do you call the you know the converters teleconverters that go on the back and um, uh, additional lenses you can add to the front you can get up to ten times magnification with a camera with one of these I'd suggest that you don't I'd suggest if you go above anything above five times so this native uh, lens will magnify up to five times on a camera. I would suggest if you want higher magnification than that, then you're probably looking at stereo microscope territory um, or something like that. I completely agree with that. I use a um, Nikkor, I think it's 85 millimeter um, macro lens and that um, with a, a ring flash. And my ring flash I've set up so that the the light isn't uniform so you don't get that terrible forensic effect all the time um, i have also now set the camera up so that it doesn't actually fire until the point focus is in focus so that means i've gone away from having to use a monopod to hold the camera steady so uh, um, you, you kind of fire and uh, sometimes it waits a moment but as long as you sort of hold your breath you can get really good handheld shots and that, that's good enough but as you say that's quite limited um, and you very very rapidly progress into the area where you you need to use the stereo microscope but one other thing I, I wanted to add for the uh, the glasses wearers and I'm and you hear me say this quite often I'm a glasses wearer and I had these glasses made up so specifically uh, to make it easier to use optical equipment. And it's not something that you always think of. I mean, my vision, I, I, I have what they call astigmatism. So the correction's quite cylindrical. So I cannot take my glasses off to look down binoculars, telescopes, or microscope. But what the optician did, he made up a very wide area that's very flat and uniform for me to look down a stereo uh, microscope or binoculars. So I know that my doctor correction is always zero. And then because I'm, I'm chronologically gifted, not old, um, I need focus. So I've, uh, quite an extended range of focus, so I can use a computer. But right down at the bottom, I've got what I nickname Super Zoom, um, where the, it's set up so that I can focus a lot closer than you would for reading. Um, so I, I, I can actually look at, at very small, small things. But so what I'm saying is that unless your vision correction is very simple, it is worth having a chat to your optician saying, I want to use 
the stereo microscope. And it may be that you need a pair of glasses to go with it as well. There's no point spending a load of money on a microscope when the problem is, is actually at, at this end, the, uh, the eyeballs that are looking down into the microscope. Even, um, I, w I have to say, after you told me that a while back, Paul, um, I, I got myself a new pair of glasses uh, from uh, Specsavers. I'm, I'm a very focals wearer as well. And even, even Specsavers will do you um, a, a, a prescription which has magnified extra magnification at the bottom. And now uh, when I go out, I can actually see all the limifeids in the tray. I can actually see the bloody things because of uh, that. Um, I just wanted to share uh, something else uh, briefly. Uh, so this is uh, this is a spider. This is taken with the uh, Lauer. Is am I pronouncing that right? Venus Optics lens. So this is probably about three times native magnification. I have no idea what the magnification works out to uh, when you uh, you know when you project it on a on a screen like this. Um, but um, it, this is an incredibly sharp lens. It's much sharper than the copy the Canon MPE I had. Uh, it's excellent value for money. Uh, and you can, you know, you can even compact cameras, if you buy the right one, will produce pretty good macro photos. But you can see here the depth of field problem. You can see if you look, its knees are in focus. Uh, the very top of the prosoma is in focus, but actually the eyes are not in focus. And, and the ophisoma is in focus, but, but the legs are out of focus. This is, this is just optics, I'm afraid. Uh, this is just the way it works. Um, the, the, more, the more you magnify, um, the, the lower the depth of field. Um, Hazel asked me about uh, preparing spiders. Um, it's quite a big question, Hazel. Um, uh, that the, the original idea, we were supposed to be trudging around in the water today looking at spiders. So, so maybe, maybe we could put that down as a topic for a future, I'm assuming Paul's taking notes here, uh, maybe we could put spiders down as a topic. I think we've got some other BAS members here, haven't we? Uh, probably, so yeah. Apart from tea, I thought there were some others, but um, uh, that you know, we, we, we might deal specifically with spiders at a, uh, partic a particular issue. Um, and then Jonathan asked about um, microscope setup for um, uh, really small things, pollen grains, spores, etc. Um, you're getting there more into transillumination. And, and frankly, not so much for pollen grains, but certainly for spores, you're actually looking at improving the quality of images through staining um, uh, at that stage. I mean, that's conventional microscopy um, rather than the sort of, I don't know what to call it, macro microscopy that entomologists uh, engage in. Once you get onto fungal spores um, and, and, and pollen grains and things like that, uh, it, it's much more in the area of conventional microscopy. So there you're almost getting into things like phase contrast microscopy um, or staining to improve the contrast ratio in the subject itself and then just transilluminating. I, th I think there's not an awful lot of benefit about uh, top illumination or something as sport, small as a pollen grain or, uh, or a spore. It, it's more about specimen preparation uh in 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 once you, once you get as small as that really i mean in terms of conventional microscopy in terms of things like looking at bacteria the objects that we look at down microscopes are big um they're, they're small for the naked eye but com for, compared with what actual you know compared with what microbiologists would look at they're they're, they're quite big objects which is both a blessing and a curse uh, i was just going to turn that around uh, 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 Jonathan, is, is it something that you'd be prepared to lead an online session on? Because we found we learn so much when we, we talk to other people. I've not looked at um, pollen grains for <laughs> 30, 40 years. I found it fascinating though. Yeah, I mean, it's something, um, my background sort of microbiology. So I've always, I'm kind of comfortable with like staining and things like that, but it's more the, um, the microscope setups like other people who have worked in labs you kind of just grab whatever microscope you can find in the lab at the time and sort of you fiddle around flicking levers and switches until you get what you want without much like knowledge of the microscope itself um so it's more the sort of 
the technical aspect of using the microscope rather than the sample preparation that I guess I'm a bit more familiar with. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it would be an interesting area to um, delve um, into. I mean, rarely the, the, the club operated as a um, area of um, yeah, a, a group of common interest. And certainly we, we had many very interesting conversations and I, I found that I was learning so much. I wish I'd had the opportunity to, to come to these meetings a long time ago, it would have, I would have certainly bought microscopes sooner. But I, I, I certainly haven't got any special experience in, in that area. I don't know about you, uh, Alan. Otherwise, honestly, uh, Jonathan, we'd have to look to you to say, well, we'd be really interested in driving it a little bit um, further. And all the microscopes that I've been able to gather together um, now, um, at the uh, volunteer training centre, they're all basically binocular microscopes of um, various vintages. So I think that's that also reflected the sort of common interest that many people had in either dissecting um, moths for ID or you know, um, looking at the uh, smaller invertebrates um, where we've got to count spines on legs and things like that, whether it's beetles or, or spiders. So we'd not really played very much at all with compound microscopes or anything else, had we? We we did look at uh, we did have some sessions looking at rust fungi, um, which were yes. which were quite useful. Um, the downside of that is, as far as I understand it from our local expert, uh, ninety percent of identifying rust fungus is identifying the host plant, and if your botany is as bad as mine, then uh, that that puts you at a disadvantage to start off with. <laughs> Um, I, I, I mean, I'm not an expert microscopist at all. Um, uh, so um, I, I'm, I've been learning as I go. And I, I, I wanted to share what I shared this afternoon because I feel like I've made a, you know, a, step, a big step forward in my, my, my microscopy in the last couple of months just by changing the lighting and spending, mm. okay, 150 quid isn't, isn't nothing, but compared with the cost of a microscope, it's a relatively small addition and it's just made such a huge impact. And, and that's really what these sessions are supposed to be about, just picking up these little incremental, it's the Dave Brailsford thing, it's, it's incremental changes, you know, that, that, that tiny little changes that will give you a 1% performance gain. And over the course of a year, when you add up all those 1%, then, then you really are, you know, you, you, you really get somewhere. Mm. I think the other thing, um, we're, we're sort of moving towards the, uh, 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 the, 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 the end uh, game of this, uh, this meeting here, is what format, if, if any, would you find interesting for, for us to, um, to do? It's really clear it's going to be a while before we can have physical meetings again. But what can we do online in this environment that you would um, find interesting and, and worthwhile to do? And it's, it's perfectly okay to say, well, I'm not sure there is anything we can do, but I, I rather suspect there are a limited number of things that we can do which would be um, uh, wor worthwhile. Um, so I made a, um, uh, a few suggestions. Um, when I was talking to Annie Smith, we had the idea, because I have a very large garden here, it would be really nice to kind of do like a little mini garden bio blitz. Um, I really have no idea how we would do that in practice. I think possibly doing something uh, a little more focused, like uh, some presentations of some sort, or recordings of doing dissections, or what have you, the, the, the preparation of um, stuff ready for photographs, that might work. But hey, we're open to suggestions here. I, I, I think things like if, if people are new to microscopy or if they're in a different area of microscopy, which is different to work with an area that they've worked in previously, things like specimen preparation, again, is an, is an, is an undervalued and underappreciated technique. If you get the specimen preparation right, you really improve the output. And, and it's something that, you know, we, we talk about sticking things under the microscope and that doesn't necessarily describe what we're actually doing. 
Um, just just like we tend to ignore the lighting, we think, well, we, we you know we've got a built-in light on our microscopes, so we'd switch it on, and that's it. Well, it isn't. You know, it, it, there's a lot more you can do to improve things. So I think all those little, and I, I have to say, Paul, I don't want to put you off your great idea, but my garden has been bio blitz to death during lockdown. I don't really want to bio blitz my garden anymore. <laughs> uh, so um, that, that's great. I mean, you know, um, I, I, I think some taxon focused um, presentations or just little, so I mean, we could do talk about, I mean, we talk more about lighting, but I don't want to bore people to death. We could talk about focus stacking, um, we could talk about spiders, we could talk about spores or pollen grains, you know, moths, dissection, specimen preparation. I think there's lots of things we could do in these sessions. It's a question of what people want. Okay, well, let's ask a few questions then. Um, if you click your little participant uh, thingy, you should get a menu where you can type yes, no, and do a thumbs up or, or, or thumbs down. How many people will be interested in a session on uh, focus stacking? Uh, it won't take three hours, by the way. Oh, got some raised hands um, there. That 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 sounds uh, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I'd love a good session on focus stacking uh, as well. Oh yeah, and uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, how uh, I guess the other uh, uh, thing there. How many people want kind of a, a simple introduction on how many people want an advanced uh, thing? Because you, 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 you know how to basically take, yeah, let's phrase it again. How many people basically know how to take photographs down a microscope? Raise your hands there. I know, you, yeah, you, 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 yeah, uh, so yeah. Reactions, yeah, you do, do the uh, a thumbs up or something. Hey, yeah, how many try again? How many people know how to do basic photography down the microscope? Not many. Ooh. Right. Okay. It sounds like a. I think um, uh, as to Paul, as as Steve said in the chat window. I mean, even if you can take photos down a microscope, seeing how somebody else does it can be really informative. You can pick stuff up, even if you've been taking photos down a microscope for a long time, think, oh, that's a good way of doing it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 okay, well, that, that's, um, uh, that's, that, that's potentially an idea. How, how about, um, uh, I mean, I can only do um, uh, moth dissections. It's the only thing I'm any good, good at. How many people are interested in uh, learning how to do that? So that's tax on uh, specific stuff. Any people interested in uh, do, doing? Uh, oh, 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 yes. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, okay. Well, if I record me dissecting something, I'll make you all sign a disclaimer saying that you mustn't laugh at my technique. Okay, because <laughs> because. I, I would have loved to have learned from somebody and I've only learned by making an awful lot of mistakes. Um, so I found stuff that um, actually works. But at the VTC, we found that um, uh, people picked it up really very quickly once they, 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 they saw it um, happening. So something I'd love uh, to know a little bit more about is actually preparing um, slides. For the microscope, because uh, I, I get really mixed mixed results, um, uh, and I prepare temporary slides for taking photographs and semi permanent slides, but some of my semi permanent ones aren't as even semi permanent as I would have hoped. Um, anybody interested in in that sort of um, that that sort of aspect? Oh, gosh. You lot are interested in absolutely everything. <laughs> that's 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 yeah, uh, that's just great. gonna so say I, yes I, I, to everything, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they uh, yeah. The 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 other thing that we may be able to um uh to do, and I think it shows what sort of mailing lists I was on, is that uh. I had an email saying special offer on sodium hydroxide and 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll, I'll have that. 
So um, I must be on some very strange mailing list somewhere. But one of the things that we were talking about at the, uh, the club was actually buying some of the chemicals in larger quantity and then just putting them into smaller containers um, for people to actually use because, you know, just one, one set of shipping costs. So the, these were about 10 quid a pop. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know, for sodium hydroxide, you use about three mil a specimen. So, you know, there's quite a lot of specimens there, but I seem to go through the stuff quite a lot. So it's something else that we could do is organize some slightly larger purchases. But then the question would be how to um, distribute it. Where we were meeting at the VTC, of course, we, 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 we had a focus point where we could have, uh, you know, people could have collected stuff. But I'm not quite sure how we do I'm, that. I'm, I'm be bearing, in mind, bearing in mind post office rules for chemicals, Paul. I'm not sure that that's on really uh, now. That no, we can't possible. send it. That's what I mean. You've got to collect it. Yeah. So collecting it from the VTC is one thing. Yeah. So it has to be couriered. So, I mean, I've just had two litres of that, this stuff, you know, couriered here. So that was one charge. That will do me for the, uh, yeah. for the next year on, on both of that. So, but I realise that new people getting the chemicals is actually quite difficult because you only want tiny little quantities. So a couple, couple of things from the chat, um, Margaret. Yeah, gin is acceptable for preserving. Vodka is actually better. Um, you can get up to about 40% alcohol. No, you, no, no, no. Specimens, Margaret. Specimens. Um, and um, uh, we don't do tonic <laughs> either. Um, but um, uh, um, it will preserve stuff if, if you're desperate. 70% is better. It won't preserve stuff long term. And Steve's had his hand up for a long time, waiting patiently to say something, I think. No? No, he's just got his hand up randomly. Oh, okay. Well, we'll do that. <laughs> now, he, now he hasn't. Okay. Sorted. Anybody I else? Want to say anything? Any requests? The first part of my question, the first part of my question was assuming that photographs uh, taken by microscopy are different. Uh, it's a different tool that you would then use to perhaps do a photo display onto a display board or um, for you know a, a, a bigger or at the time audience. Is that right? Um, I, uh, well, if I understand you correctly, um, not, not, not really. I mean, once you've formed an image, whether it's using a film camera or a digital camera, then you can do whatever you want to do with that image. You've got a digital photo, you can print it out or show it electronically or whatever. Was that what you meant? I just got in the back of my head that, um, that something I'd seen on the microscope at, at Rutland was specifically to then show through a computer to then display an image that it then oh, I, 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 yeah okay I understand what you you mean so the uh, Zeiss microscope at Rutland Water that has a built-in um, fairly low resolu resolution but well matched um, camera and so we were able to display that image on the computer and then the computer image onto the screen. But to be honest, you can do that with, um, as long as you've got the right bit, you can do that with almost um, any digital camera and computer um, combination. So um, uh, the nice thing about the one at Rutland Water is because there was an app and it was specifically designed as a teaching tool, um, it would stream up to, I think it was about 10 or 12 people simultaneously. So if you had a compatible tablet or phone, you could also have a look at what the image was as, as we were working. And we found that really useful for the detection. But on the setup I've got here, I mean, if I were to drag that down to the VTC, we, we could put that through the digital projector as um, as well, you just need the, all the right cables in, um, in you know, to plug into the right slots. Does that answer it, Margaret? Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. 
But I'm, I'm guessing it was the fact that we needed the app at Rutland Water is what made you think it was um, uh, special. Um, and it was a very, very nice app um, as, uh, as, as well. It's quite, quite well polished bit of kit that. Uh, okay, Paul. Uh, Alan, okay. Um, yeah, well, um, I, we, we've been going for an hour, so um, I'm inclined, I, I think I'll, um, I'll, I'll stop the recording now um, and say um, thanks to everyone for uh, participating. We hope to see you again.